Alexa, turn on the office. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and uh, you know I want to think less when I do my videos. Uh, so when I have an idea about something cool I want to show you, I'm just going to hit record, and here we are. So um, I've been messing around a lot with um, IoT devices uh, lately. I showed you my uh, little thing here that I made in Circuit Python that shows my blood sugar, and um, it's a little microprocessor that uses Circuit Python. And if we look at my desk here, you can see another little wonderful circuit Python thing that is a macro pad. And when I turn this knob, I get different um, uh, different presets, right? It's like Minecraft or whatever. The refresh rate there is because the refresh rate of my camera is off by a little bit with the refresh rate of this screen. But it actually looks perfect um, if you see it. Let's see? doesn't actually flicker. Um, but what I wanted to show you today was uh, a really cool thing called a meadow, and a meadow from a company called Wilderness Labs. And just for um, full disclosure, um, while this is not a paid thing, uh, certainly I don't do sponsored videos, uh, I do uh, invest. I am an investor in Wilderness Labs because I think they're super cool. Uh, and I'm doing this video you know, because I think it's cool. I didn't tell him I was going to do it though. So this chip right here, this chip is the Meadow and that's the Meadow kind of developer kit you can get. And then the board that it's sitting on here is this project lab. It's basically like you, you know, when they hand you the thing as a, as a person who's getting started, they'll hand you just this, this micro little F7 micro and then you have to go and add screens and then add buttons and wire it up and the barrier to entry might be a little high for your average folks and uh, when you purchase the thing as a developer you get a kit like this and then you can go and wire it up it's not hard but it's you know you can't get up and running in in five minutes so this this project lab board basically is a board that this guy sits on top of, and then you get screens and buttons and relays and plugs for other sensors here. So here's another sensor. Uh, you can have, you know, third party sensors that put onto these buses. So this is just a nice uh, extender expando board. So why do you care? Well, my friends, well, let's go over to my desktop and I'll explain why. Because the Wilderness Labs device this whole IoT platform runs .NET, and that's freaking nuts. Because when you are, you know, usually thinking about devices like this, microprocessors, traditionally you're writing that code in C or some low-level language. Uh, only, you know, in the last couple of years, our higher-level languages like our Circuit Python friends at Adafruit, uh, making that more available, so you can do really low-level code with really comfortable high-level languages. So this platform all runs in C Sharp, and what's cool about that is that if you know C Sharp, suddenly you become a really effective developer really, really quickly, and the uh, the code is really easy to read. So, for example, this little guy right here is uh, running a weather app. Okay, so you're connecting to the Wi-Fi. Uh, you have to do that securely. You're then making a REST API call out to a service and then connecting to their SSL. All of those stacks and layers have to work. You're painting to a color screen. Uh, this looks black and white, but you can. this is a color screen. Um, you're getting sensors on the board itself, as well as the sensor from the outside, connecting to a time server. There's a lot going on here. And the code is super easy to read. So check this out, kids. Um, this is just C sharp. So let's uh, let's take a look. All of this stuff came out of the Wilderness Labs uh, GitHub, uh, and it was called uh, do, 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 Wilderness Labs GitHub. Should have had that ready before I started. But you like it like this, don't you, friends? Here you go. The Project Lab sample. So all these samples. So I just cloned this repo. This this repo. I grabbed my my device. And all of these run immediately. So you can control the lab with a Xamarin app. You can talk over Bluetooth. See that you can do a soil sensor, which comes with the kit. Actually, let me grab the kit. The kit's super cool. Comes with this kit. 
and then inside the kit you get sensors and stuff so for example that soil sensor that we're looking at right here there's the there's the soil sensor so i could go and for example make a little robot that waters my plants right whatever it's totally up to you uh so the weather station one right here calling it calling a public weather service that's all dedicated in here and all you got to do is just turn turn the on switch onto that board and i'm running it right now over uh usb micro usb so that code right here is this little deal here so you got a c-sharp app you can see we've got some jpegs for our um for our weather icons and stuff and we'll just open up program.cs and you'll see that it just starts up as like a console app and then within this public static void main we instantiate a meadow app and then we hang out the meadow app right here is a very clever here because it's an app of type meadow app that can communicates with that f7 feather in this case of version 2 feather and that feather is this board right it's this this board right here i don't know how the, the makeup kids on youtube try to get that to look nice right that is this board here so then the magical chip is here and then this little board here so if you are a professional iot person you would uh, maybe make your own or you'd buy the chips from them and you would deploy it even smaller these are micro controllers not micro processors and that's a bit of a of a funny nit to uh to point out but if you had a raspberry pi that's going to run a whole desktop operating system so if i'm going to fire up a raspberry pi like this right like this pi top the raspberry pi inside there that's going to run linux full-on run raspbian run ubuntu it's got a whole ton of stuff um, it's a little overkill, and that's not going to run for days and days and days on battery. That's going to run for hours and hours on battery. While uh, a microcontroller basically does one thing. It has one program that kind of boots into that program. So we're going to boot into this weather program here. Okay. So what we do is we start up, and it acknowledges that we've got a pulse width modulation RGB LED. So that's a red, green, blue pulse width pulse width modulation light emitting diode aren't the three letter acronyms the tla is great and then we're just lining up our pins we're using the onboard led turning it to red when we boot up for the first time then we're connecting to the wi-fi so writing one line of c sharp here and i'm going to go and connect to the wi-fi that is on board this device which is super convenient because you know early days when i was doing stuff with arduinos you had to have a uh, extra parts to connect to your Wi-Fi and now these Wi-Fi chips and Bluetooth chips are available so that we can do these things super easy which is great then we're going to connect to this a BME 6080 what is that right that's a barometer you see how it says meadow foundation sensors there's a whole namespace filled with support for these different sensors and this is just one barometric sensor you can do other ones then we have a view, so you're getting kind of a model view controller or a view uh, view model style. We start this onboard LED, make it magenta, and then we'll go and read our ambient temperature. We're going to use that onboard uh, barometer to check our inside temperature, the temperature in the room here, and then make a call out to get the weather forecast. And that weather forecast will be external. So we're checking the temperature on the inside, we're checking the temperature on the outside, and you remember what that looks like right there beautiful screen lovely screen all right and then we update the display we have the model where that data is going to sit let's take a look at that model so if we right click on this model here we can say peak definition that's a weather view model let's go and look at that look at that nice and simple this is great this is easy to read c sharp code Got our weather code, our outdoor temp, and our indoor temp. That's basically it. We load that guy up, and then we pass him around. We pass him around. Let me close this peak. And then, you know, get temperature. It's pretty straightforward. We just go and wait. We're only checking the temperature 
um, on the top of the minute. Okay, so we're going in every minute checking that and updating that temperature. Let's go look at the weather service. We're going to go and zoom in on that. Let's go to definition. I had to go and get an API key up at Open Weather Maps. So I signed up for a key. I hid it in this region. It's actually inside of a static string. And then I put in that I was in Portland. And then we just build a URL. We say, give me that URL, that Open Weather API. We add the city Portland and then my API key. And that's just a JSON response. I could go and show you and it would come right out in um, JSON inside of a browser. So we're just calling a web service. Then this is what's so nice. On an IoT device, we can literally deserialize JSON of type weather reading, right? And then return those values. We're even getting async and await, which is so great. So if we come back over here, we get that out. That's now sitting in outdoor conditions. And then we split it up and we take the weather reading and we put it and combine it with our inside weather reading and we put it on that weather model super cool their samples come with a ton of stuff morris code uh, companion apps on ios and android it really makes iot just a lot easier uh, than uh, than gosh than i was kind of used to and in fact you can see that there's clocks and moisture meters plant monitors all kinds of stuff ambient room monitor. So in this case, I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to show you that was cool, I forgot about this. So this is a little more advanced. So if you thought that was cool and you enjoyed that part of the video, smash the bell, subscribe. We love you. You can leave now. A little bit lower level. When you're flashing these kind of devices, when you are updating the operating system on these kind of devices, on Windows, it can be a little bit challenging because you sometimes will plug a device in and it usually comes up with this thing called an STM bootloader, and it, you need to get direct access to the USB so that you can flash or update the operating system, the RTOS or the real-time operating system. And I, I know that it's a hassle because I wrote kind of like the definitive blog post on how to deal with the hassle. You usually end up using a thing called DFU util to go and flash this firmware, and then you have to go and mess around with this stuff. DFU device firmware utility. Uh, so devices like Meadows or any STM32 device, this whole family of the ST microelectronics ARM uh, MCUs or microcontrollers can be challenging sometimes on Windows. Uh, that's something that the Windows folks need to work out, but this is a cool, a cool thing that you can do now on Windows. So here we have Windows on the left, Okay, Windows on the left. It says PowerShell over here. So here's me. Do, 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 do. PowerShell. And then over here, do, 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 do. Ubuntu. So I've got split screen right here. Okay. Now I've plugged this device in. We just saw that device. This device down here is plugged in with a micro USB. So it's currently, if I use the Meadow command line that came with my Meadow processor, you can see that it says it's on COM port 7. So that shows up as COM port 7. Uh, and that lets me talk to it. And you can see I can ask questions of it. I said, you know, give me the information about the device. When was the firmware updated and all that kind of stuff. And you can see that it's currently running Wi-Fi weather. Okay. But if I wanted to go and update this thing, it can be a little bit challenging. Sometimes you'll go and say uh, Meadow device flash OS. And it'll say entering DFU mode, uh, which is device firmware update. And it's going to start getting confused. Now, I haven't done all the instructions. This is totally possible on Windows, but it's a hassle. So I was trying to think about how can we make this more of a hassle? In a minute here, it's going to just say, uh, how can we make this less of a hassle, rather? It's going to say, oh, I can't enter DFU mode. What are we going to do? And it's going to freak out. Okay? Got confused. On Linux, though, what if I could do that flashing on Linux, but I need to tell Linux about my USB? Well, on Linux, you typically say um, LS USB. See that? So what you can do with Windows subsystem for Linux is you can connect or share your USB device, your raw USB device, across the boundary between Windows on the left and Linux on the right. And there's this wonderful GUI app here, the WSL USB Manager, WSL 
USB GUI, and that's over here from this gentleman, Alec. Let's see if I, Andrew Leach, pardon me, Andrew Leach. And what it is, is it's a wrapper on top of the command line tools that I've talked about before on the, uh, on the podcast. So if you notice here, you can see my Windows USB devices listed here. You know, the, my cameras, my Bluetooth and whatnot. And then I have got a USB device here. Doing a, I'm doing a uh, YouTube there, buddy. Okay, thank you, sir. Hang on. My son is asking for screen time. And that's important, isn't it, kids? All right. So here, what we've done is we've shared this STM bootloader across the processor. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Sorry about that, friends. See how we don't do edits here? We don't, because it's just not worth the trouble. All right. We've shared it across. So that WSL USB device is available over here. So if I go and use this tool, this USB IP ID, you can see right there. Look at that. Here's a list of our USB devices, including that STM or the ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex that has been removed from the list of Windows USB devices and then sent across and attached over into uh, the uh, the Ubuntu world. Here it is. Now, if I click detach, okay, click detach, and I say LS USB, you see how it's gone. Linux no longer knows about that, okay? And if I list it again, you can see that it appears here on bus ID 10.4, and it is not attached. Now, I can do all this work from the command line. I could go and uh, attach that with a command line instruction. And again, I've written about this on my blog. You can try the instructions. Uh, but it's super nice that I can go and then hit attach. That's going to jump across this boundary. It's actually tunneling uh, IP, tunneling, eh, look at that, tunneling USB protocol over the Internet protocol boundary. And now at this point, I can go and flash that without having to install any drivers. I didn't have to do anything. So now I could go and say meadow, flash, whatever, and see exactly what's going on. So if I wanted to flash that, I could do that. See, here's all the things I could go. ESP, file write, all the stuff I can do and talk to that. So I can deal with that. Now, you don't have to do this. I don't want that to be the focus of the video. But I just think it's such so nice that I'm having... Uh, such a wonderful experience messing around with a microcontroller. I'm comfortable on Windows. I can run the Windows commands if I want to. I can run the Linux commands if I want to. I don't have to install any drivers or anything. I get to use this cool USB manager to share devices across the environment. And then I can go and run my C Sharp application on a freaking microcontroller. So, of course, you know that my next thing is going to be to make a blood sugar uh, sensor because that's what I do it is my hello world just happens to be blood sugar stuff so it'll be you know I've been learning circuit Python now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna learn how to do the same kind of thing with this screen and do it in C sharp and it's be pretty fast I'll probably be able to pull that off in maybe an hour or two uh, this weekend and I'll share it with you if you find that interesting so uh, once again Thanks for hanging out. If you like this video and videos like it on the channel, I would encourage you to subscribe and check out the other videos. I've got a whole playlist called Computer Stuff They Didn't Teach You in School that's worth checking out. Thanks, friends.